back to the channel. I'm your host, Akika David. I'd like to welcome everyone back, all the 12 tribes of Israel and all those who joined themselves with us. You know, the last video that I made was called The Warning. We're gonna continue on that page. I have to warn you. Let me show you something that you've probably never seen or you've never heard before. Get a pen and paper. Go to the book of Ezekiel and go to chapter number three, verse number 17. I'm not gonna take a long time to read this. I'm just gonna bring it out. I'm just gonna show it to you right quick. So when you read it, you'll understand what it is that I'm saying. It says this, pull it right here. Forgive me for, for, for not having it available. I thought I had it up, but I didn't. In the book of Ezekiel, the Most High had told him, he said, listen, I need you to go to the children of Israel. When you get to the children of Israel, I want you to deliver a message for them. You tell them that they're a house of rebels. Once you tell them they're a house of rebels, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen if you don't do what I tell you to do. I wanna share this with you, so I want you to understand the responsibility that's placed upon a person who decides that they wanna say what Yahweh says. Remember what I told you, you can't believe everybody that's talking to you, okay? Because if they're not telling what he said, you don't have anything to do with them. He says this, I went to the exiles who were living in Tel Aviv by the Kavar River and I stayed with them and I was in a stupefied state for seven days. And after seven days, the word of Yahweh came unto me, human being, I have appointed you to be a watchman for the house of Israel. You need to be appointed by the Most High to be a watchman. Someone who's going to ha have the blinkers on, who's going to have their eyes open, who's going to be paying attention about what's going on. Nobody just vicariously running around trying to take your money, okay, and say, I'll share some mysterious things with you or some additional information that you don't have, that I, that you don't have access to. But when you pay me, then I'm going to go ahead and give it to you. You want to get away from those people. So he's a watchman for the house of Israel. He says, when you hear a word from my mouth, or you are to warn them for me. You're there, you're there to warn them. 18. If I say to a wicked person, you will certainly die. And you fail to warn him to speak with him and to warn the wicked person to leave his wicked way and save his life then that wicked person will die guiltily and I will hold you responsible. I'm going to hold you responsible for his death. This is not a game. If Yah has put a word in your mouth and he told you to tell the people that you live around, hey, listen, this is what Yah is saying. Do you guys really want people to die around you? Do, should I remind you of what Yah has done? Should we go back to Genesis so I can remind all of us here of what he did to the whole entire world? Tell me, how many people lived after the judgment of Yah? Eight people. Is Yah interested in quantity? Eight people not 80 not 800 not 8,000 not 80,000 not 800,000 eight people how do you like that you still think this is a game did you know that the most high said Move out the way, Moshe, so I can wipe them out. Who? The children of Israel. And I will start over with just you. What? Is he only concerned with quantity or quality? What is he looking for? What are you looking for? Do you need me to be on here for 35, 45, an hour, two, two to three hours? You need quality. You don't need quantity. 
If you have teachers that are not teaching what Yahweh says, you want to get them off of your channel. You want to remove people out of your life that is not saying what he's saying. It's only the words of Yahweh that can keep you safe. If you don't warn the wicked, I'm holding you responsible for his soul. Are you saying that he's responsible that he could die for me? No. Deuteronomy 24, 16 says what? No man can die for your sins. Every man is going to be responsible for their own manner of life and conduct. That's what his Torah says. Those are the instructions from the Holy One of Israel. Those are not my words. I want everyone to do me a favor. When you watch this channel, I want you to have a pen and paper handy. And I want you to verify everything I'm telling you. I'm going to tell you what my tools are. A lot of people don't want to share their tools, but I'm going to. I use the Bible Hub. I put that up there before, thebiblehub.com. I use biblestudies.com tool or biblestudies.com. It gives you a whole bunch of different types of, of scriptures that you can use. I use that as well. I also go to the Ancient Hebrew Research Institute. Great website. Okay, great website. On that website, you can look at the Torah in its written format. You can look how it is. And he actually gives you the transliteration. I mean, he spells out the words for you. So if you're interested in learning how to read Hebrew quick, start reading the transliterations to get your tongue used to saying the words. That's what I did. It's not hard. What else do I use? I use the ancient uh, Hebrew Bible lexicon. I'm nothing special. I'm not. And anybody out there that's trying to make you believe that they're special and that they're, they're anointed, all of us are anointed. Every last one of us is anointed. There's a scripture. There's a text. And I believe that is in the book of Psalms. I'm hoping that I'm correct here. I believe it is. And I want to read something to you. I want to share it with you because I don't think anybody has really told us this. I have a few minutes. I'm going to keep the videos a little bit shorter to have be more respectful towards our, um, our time. This is what it says. He says that remember all the wonders. Well, let me start in verse four. No, that's not, that's not doing it justice. Let's just start in verse one. Verse one says this, give thanks to Yahweh, call on his name, make his deeds known among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him and talk about all his wonders. Glory in his name and let those seeking him have joyful hearts. Seek Yahweh. Have you noticed the, the, the operative word is seeking him. Seek Yahweh and his strength. Always seek his presence, always. Remember the wonders that he has done in his signs and his spoken rulings, not just him opening up the sea, not him just feeding us in the wilderness, not him just uh, making water come out of a rock. His rulings, the things that he has said, remember the signs and his rulings. Your descendants of Abraham, his servant, your offspring, Yaakov, his chosen ones. Oh, you better hear me. The ones that he have chosen, he says, Yahweh is our Elohim. He, he, his rulings are everywhere on the earth. We are Yahweh's anointed chosen people. That's why I have to warn us. We're in a contract. It's called a covenant. A covenant in our Hebraic understanding means this, and I'm going to calm down. When you did a covenant in our ancient Hebraic times, Hebraic times, they would take an animal and they would split it in half. You can verify this in Genesis chapter number 15 or better sheet than Hebrew. God told Abraham, I need you to get those animals and take them and split them down the middle. Once you split them in the middle, both parties would walk between those animals. The parties that walked to them, through them were, were suggesting that if I broke this covenant, let happen to me what happened to these animals. But as you notice in Genesis 15, Abraham didn't walk through those animals. 
only Yah. The promises that are made to us are forever. Yah gave Abraham a covenant of the seed, his descendants, and a promise of land. That's in Genesis 15, and then it's in Genesis 17. What did he give Yitzchak? He gave Yitzchak a sworn oath that I, whatever I promised your father, I'm going to give to you. I'm going to show it to you. You verify it by reading the scriptures that I put up on here for you. Covenant to Abraham for seed and land. A sworn oath to Yitzchak. And guess what he gave to their other son, Yaakov? Our inheritance is the covenant of the Torah. We are bound to Yah. There's no getting away from him at all. Make up your mind, Israel. I called us rebels last time I had a discussion, right? Let me tell you what a rebel is. A rebel is someone who is bitter. Bitterness, like the word Mirayim or Mary, it means to be bitter. What do you mean be bitter? Why? What, what do you mean bitter? Why? What do you mean? It means that when they eat Yahweh's words, it makes their them sick to their stomach. Unlike when Ezekiel ate the scroll that was given to him, Yahweh's words, it became sweet as honey to his mouth. He didn't get sick. You can read that in chapter number two of Ezekiel. I'll put it up here for you. We're in the last days. We're in what they call the Akalrith Hamayim. The Akalrith Hamayim means the following days, the last days. When you're in the last days, he said there's going to be a lot of trouble. There's going to be trouble among, among the nations. We're in trouble because of COVID. We're in trouble because of employment. We're in trouble in all these areas of our life. Things are getting worse and worse and worse. Turn to Yahweh right now. Turn to the Torah. What else can I say? These are the warnings. We're in the last days. And I got to warn you. But he told Ezekiel, if you don't warn them, I'm going to hold you responsible. And I know a lot of you guys don't want me to be responsible for you, do you? <laughs> If you want to find out what the difference between wickedness and righteousness is, I want you to go to Ezekiel number 18. And then I want you to find out how Yah feels about the wicked. Well, I'll tell you. He says, do I want the wicked to perish? Israel, you say I'm unfair. What would I have the wicked do? I'd have the wicked turn from his wickedness and turn to righteousness. And in the same manner, if a righteous person turns from his righteousness to do wickedness, I will destroy him too. And I won't remember none of his righteousness. That's our Elohim. Our Elohim is an Elohim of justice and righteousness. I'm going to say it again. Remember Genesis eight people out of all humanity question if you were living back then would you have been one of the eight would you have been Noah how much do you love Yah how committed are you how willing are you to do what he says? This is a matter of what they call willpower. <laughs> do you have the willpower? I'm gonna leave you with that question. I want you guys to have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Shalom.